Hey folks, hopefully this is just a quick from the desk video. Um, we talked a little bit with, I'm going to unplug this here so I can start clean, about the Raspberry Pi Pico just about a year ago, in fact. Um, well, you can see this is just a cut and paste from Josh's email that he finally got his Pico controllers. Could I tell him how and where to get started? Now, we've been working with this a little bit via email and just messaging back and forth, talking about, you know, different ways to do it, different things to do. He also asked if I could come back and do some projects down the road. We definitely can. I've been wanting to play with a Pico, but I've yet to just take the time to do it. So we're going to specifically address two problems that Josh had with the Pico and getting Circuit Python running on the Pico. Um, I have yet to do this. So I sat down and actually played with this from scratch. And it did take a little bit to go through their documentations and figure out what I was doing wrong. Um, and it was actually kind of twisted because reading Josh's email kind of sent me down the wrong track. But let's just start from scratch, Josh. Press and hold the boot select button. Plug it in to your PC. Okay. Now we've booted up. We know that we're running in RPI, RP2, so RASPI. We are in Pico mode. So to get the UF2 for CircuitPython over there, it's as simple as drag and drop. Let it copy over. It's going to take a few seconds to copy. Now it's disconnected. Leave it alone. <laughs> For 20 to 30 seconds, just leave it plugged in and let it do its thing. And then we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, this, I got to admit, this was a twisted one. So we know we've put the UF2 library there. You know, we drug it over to the Python, to the Pico, let it do its thing, and it disconnected. Now, I'm going to unplug it from the micro USB. I'm going to plug it back in without holding the boot select button. There you go. So now you can see we actually have a running circuit Python right here, version 7.11, 7.1.1. And, right, you notice before it was called RPI-RP2. Now the device came back up as circuit PI. PY for Python. So we know circuit Python is running. Now, where you were making a mistake, and I, admittedly I did it twice before I went, hang on a second. And I came back over, and I can probably, let's see if I can find it in their documentation. Um, I think it's back a page. Or maybe a back, no. Um, anyway, in the documentation, I found that it specifically mentioned how to use the boot select button. And in this case, once Circuit Python is on there, don't press the boot select button. So right now, you can see we're running. <laughs> I'm trying to point with my finger here. Right now, we're in circuit Pi, right? Drive G. So I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to plug it back in without pressing the boot select button. There you go. Right back in circuit Pi. Now I'm going to unplug it. This time, I'm going to press and hold boot select and plug it back in. Uh-oh. What happened? <laughs> we are right back to the Pico in its original state. So there you go. You don't need to press the boot select with Python on it. If you do, it essentially reformats it and starts clean. This is useful, but I do think... 
<laughs> they could have done something a little different here or made it much clearer. Um, I'll highlight the doc when I find it and put it over the top of the video here. So real quick, let's get this back to CircuitPython and we'll go answer your next question. Um, the next question you're going to laugh at, I'm going to laugh at, and I'm going to laugh at both of us because this one also took me a minute or two to go, hey, wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> All right. I'm unplugged. Now I'm plugging back in without pressing boot select. And there we go. We are back in CircuitPython. So our default code file, I'm just going to open it up this way. Oh man, it saved my work. Um, <laughs> hey, that's weird. I just completely rewrote that completely brought over a new uf2 but it loaded my old g yeah it loaded the previous python file so maybe there is some hope for this i'll have to dig into that more and we'll talk about that in the next video um but all right so you use mu as your editor i don't <laughs> you saw I use notepad, but I also read that notepad plus plus doesn't work well, it doesn't play well with the Pico and other circuit Python devices. Apparently, it writes too slow. All right, so you specifically mentioned using their um blink sketch, blink file, right. You copied it over there from, so you copied it here and pasted it into Mu, and then saved it to the Pico and nothing happened. You got nothing through the serial, even on a boot, you weren't able to get any errors or anything that the sketch, the program, the Python program just didn't run now what you have to do and let's just go back right here see in the library folder and i know right now you're <laughs> smacking yourself in the head you need the library that was specifically called for in the python code so let's go over make sure you download these library bundles they're here under libraries Make sure that you get the version that matches your version of uh, CircuitPython. If you mix match, you're going to have a lot of problems. So we're going to come back over. We're going to go to library and we need to grab, which one was it? Adafruit underscore PIO ASM. Underscore PIO ASM. We're going to drag that over to our library. Okay, so now our code is there. We have the reference library right here. Right? It's right there and it's right there. Now you should be able to look down and you're blinking. <laughs> the LED on it is blinking. And that's it. That was your problem with actually getting that code to run is you did not have the appropriate library as called for in the code. I have looked at MicroPython and it seemed to me that MicroPython came with the appropriate I.O. ports or the, the I.O. instructions for the Pico. Now, that it's possible that because... Adafruit designs this to work with a bunch of boards and chipsets that it's not a native device, whereas MicroPython might be a little bit more specialized. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Because like I said, I have not done much Python at all on these controllers. Um, desktop and server environment, laptop environment, whatever you know, however you want to say it, absolutely use Python. And on the full-blown Pies. 
but I've yet to play with it on these controllers. So that one took me a little bit of research too. Anyway, hope that helped. I'll see you guys again in a couple of days here with some more stuff. <laughs> Be good.